Hello again, uh, Henrik here. Uh, during this session I will go through the different uh, PHP files and the code uh, which is responsible for running the API interface which I shown in the other video. And first we'll start off with the authentication uh, page. So this is the file authenticate.php and basically it shows you down here this is the HTML uh, page that gives you the username, password and boxes and to fill in and when I do a post back to this uh, into this page basically it grabs the options and I communicate using SOAP uh, with the API and retrieves the cookie then stores the cookie into a session and also store the username and then redirects the user to the main.php uh, script with it, which is actually the main application. As you can see here I have no input validation or anything at the moment so this is not fit to be deployed into an, uh, any environment to be honest uh, we need to add uh, some security to this uh, before actually uh, using it. <laughs> so the main.php file um, <coughs> In all of the other files except the authentication one, I'm checking uh, if the user has a session and if he has the cookie set. If he doesn't, I redirect them to the authentication page to make them log in to the application. Um, that, then, uh, further down, um, you can see that the HTML page starts here. I include a bunch of scripts uh, or JavaScript code um, this is the jQuery uh, API this is the jQuery UI add-on for jQuery which is responsible for the tabs and this is the Sparkline API which is uh, responsible for the event graph and this is the data tables uh, which is responsible for the table then I'm going to skip down a little bit down here to this document ready function. So this is code which is run after the initial page has rendered and basically what I do is that first here I set the height of the page to make sure that I fill the entire page uh, with uh, information uh, depending on which height the browser is. Next uh, I'm waiting for and um, someone to click the actual search button on the first panel and when he does that uh, I retrieve the values uh, of what he has done and I grab the date and time uh, this is the title of the new tab and the code on here is responsible for adding a new tab into the page itself then I switch to the new tab to make sure that it's active so the user doesn't have to click the tab after he, uh, he has done the search so that's, this makes the, the new tab visible and active then um, this uh, function here refresh table that actually uh, creates everything else in the tab and I will move up to this uh, function on the top here. This is the refresh table function. And basically, um, the first code here is just some code to, to look if we are do doing a search uh, from the first page or if we have hit the refresh button. Then I set the, the height of the page like I did before. Um, I display some preloaders. Uh, which is the images with the spinning things <laughs> to uh, show the user something that we are actually working then I encode uh, the URI, the URI um, so of this search field uh, because I'm using get HTTP get uh, I cannot send things like device vendor equals arcslight because it has to be in a URL format. 
Next, I load uh, the information of the do search.php file uh, and add the search itself, what the tab name will be. Uh, this is an index um, basically to differentiate between the tabs and the time period the user has selected. And this is done with Ajax. Uh, so if the actual loading of this page is successful, um, I uh, go ahead and change the image of the tab so it doesn't spin anymore. <laughs> and I'm calculating the width of my spark line, which is the graph. Uh, and make sure that we fill the entire width of the page with the graph. And then I calculate the minimum and the maximum value of the, the spark line to provide the, the library with the necessary values to, uh, uh, to display properly. And there's the initiation of spark lines to actually show the, the graph itself. And the initiation of the data table uh, to um, convert the HTML table into the nice one where you can have paging and filtering and everything like that. This code down here takes care of the drill down when clicking. So if I click an event, I'm doing something. And in this case, I'm changing the contents of the HTML element which contains the search string. Next, uh, this code takes care of when someone hits the search button within a tab and then we need to refresh the page and that's done by going back to the same function I'm already in and reloading it. And at the bottom here you can see this is the actual page. This is everything. <laughs> so this is what is displayed when the user uh, serves to the first page and hasn't done anything yet. So let's look at the do search.php file, uh, which is responsible for connecting to the logger, uh, running the search, and displaying the output. So, same thing here if the user isn't authenticated, send him to the authentication page, and then I decode the actual string sent by the load function on the previous uh, main.php file. Um, I get the tab name and the time period. Again, these are not input validated, so that has to be added. Um, next, I uh, create some HTML uh, to show the actual search and the time period and the search button on the top of the response. these two functions. This is just a function to get a timestamp um, in microseconds and this is a function to convert a PHP object to an array. Then I set some uh, variables here to do the search. As you can see here um, the field set function has not been implemented yet so at the moment these fields are hard-coded into this file. So what I plan to do is to make a feature that uh, allows the user to create their own field sets and then he can choose between these field sets uh, when doing searches and that will affect this uh, variable here. Um, so this comment is uh, wrong but uh, I'm uh, actually here setting the start time of the search. I'm getting the time period and I'm looking at uh, what the time is right now and then reversing it by the amount of time uh, the user has selected. I connect using SOAP to the, um, to the actual logger itself um, and I get the cookie from the session um, actually and then I start the search and the first thing after starting the search, you want to get the headers. Uh, so I'm running this SOAP function get header uh, in the ArcSite logger API to get the headers. And I basically store them um, in um, something called heading ARR, 
here, down here. And then uh, we're getting to the actual results of the query. Um, and I found out that you have, to, you, if you loop over this has more tuples uh, function, um, that basically allows you to check if there is any responses yet. And that is done by the, running the get next tuples uh, function. So if the, this function returns anything, um, the code down here basically uh, goes through the events and puts all the events it finds into a new array, um, which includes all the events. I also do the calculation for the field um, summary in here as well and calculate the values I need to create that spark line, the graph on the page as well. Uh, I found that the um, has more tuples function seems to always return uh, true. So this loop will, would be an endl endless loop if I weren't uh, adding any code to break out of it. So uh, I'm, what I'm doing at the moment as a workaround is that I'm, I'm counting uh, I'm counting to see if I still return any res responses. If I don't get any more responses from the logger itself, I jump out of the, the actual uh, loop itself just to not get stuck in that loop. This is not optimal. Uh, I would prefer that this function has more tuples would uh, return false when the query is completed, but it doesn't seem to work that way right now, so that's why I have this code. Uh, let's go down here. You can see all these uh, end t, start t, and everything that's uh, used to calculate how long it takes to uh, uh, actually run the query itself, and that gives me the time and the search time variable, uh, which is shown to the user. Uh, at the end, I end my search, uh, tell the logger to end the search, and that's done. Now we have all the responses in an array in PHP. So I can start outputting all the information onto the page. That's down, done down here. Um, first, there is uh, the statistics, which is actually the spark line, and um, the search time and the, the amount of hits we are receiving. Then um, we have the field stats, which is uh, the table to the left, which gives you all the unique uh, entries into each field. And then we have the events table, which shows the data tables table, uh, which includes all the events that the user want to see. That's basically it. I'll do a listing here to show you all the files. Um, the images are just images um, that are shown in different places in the application itself. Um, the date tables directory contain the data tables um, library to show the table. Uh, the UI ta directory uh, inclu includes the jQuery UI uh, add-on for jQuery, which handles the tabs. The jQuery 1.10 is actually jQuery itself, and the smart line is the smart line. Um, the silk subdirectory is, uh, includes a lot of icons uh, from the silk icon package which can be found freely on the internet uh, by searching for silk icons and that is the icons you can see in the application also. So that's basically it. Thank you. Bye.